the input function is going to display this to the user and it's going to allow the user to type in something. Now whatever the user types is going to return as a string, right? Let's store whatever the user types in the variable another entry, right? So we're going to say, do you want to add another uh, record type, the character Y for yes, and any other character for no. Now, if you notice, we've, we're exceeding this line over here. Okay, this line, this faint gray line over here, it's a guideline for me so that I do not exceed 80 characters on a line. It's a Python standard to write 80 characters on a line, so I don't want to exceed that uh, limit. So I have this line here to guide me. So I'm going to break this line into two. It's the same line. I just want to break it into two so that it, dis it, it, it doesn't exceed this line here without destroying this whole. I'm just, I'm just, just moving and breaking it into two without, without destroying the line. So to do that, I'm going to close the string here and then concatenate it with the beginning of the string. I'm just concatenating them, them here. That's all I'm doing. And so before you break any line in Python, you type in a backslash and you hit enter. Okay, you haven't done anything to the line, you haven't destroyed it, you've just, you know, um, just broken into the two, you've just separated them. But it's just, it's basically one line. Okay, they are joined with a plus. And this you have to tie before you break any line into two. So, the very first time the program runs, another entry is going to be equal to Y. While another entry is equal to Y, yes, it's equal to Y. We get the, player, the player's name, we get the player score, we write to the file the player's name and the player's score separated, you know, you know, basically line by line because of the new line character. And we ask the user again, do you want to add another record? Type Y for yes and any other character for no. Then if you type Y for yes, the reason why I, I, I was trying to use a lowercase Y and uppercase Y here is that if you say type Y, the user may type an uppercase Y, right? That's why I wanted to um, test it with an uppercase too. We will test it in a second. But let's... The way the program is running, I want the way the program is, I want us to test it to see if it's working. Before that, let's just make sure it's complete. All right, so if the user types in Y um, or a value for another entry, this while loop is going to check to see if another entry is equal to Y. If it's equal to Y, then it's going to, you know, basically repeat the process. Get the user's um, name, get the user score, write it to the file, and ask again. If it's not Y, then this while loop exits, and anything that follows the while loop runs. So when we are done, when we are outside a while loop and we are done and the user says no, let's go ahead and close the file. Let's go ahead and close the golf file. Okay, so I'm going to call the close method for it. So golf file of close. And then once we close the file, let's go ahead and print out a message to say that. Um, let's see, um, all files, let's just do this all files oh sorry all details have been printed to golf.txt something like this and then we are done all right so let i want us to test this program to see if there are any errors and then i'll i'll do what i was i wanted to do over here with a lowercase y and uppercase y so over here so far we've only defined functions we've defined functions and if we run the program nothing will happen because well first of all let's save it i'm going to save this in the folder where we normally save the files, which is Python Programming Challenges Chapter 6. I'm going to create a new folder for this one. I'm going to call it Golf Scores. Create, and I'm going to name this file golfscores.py in that folder. Okay, so nothing is going to happen when you run the program because we have only defined functions and we haven't called it. Even if, even though we define the main function, we have to call it for anything to work, right? So I'm going to go ahead, right after all of this, I'm going to call the main function this way. Right, and then now I'm going to run the program. So it's it's basically, uh, it's, it, it's, it's um, first of all, it's open the file, Okay, so it op it's opened the file. At another entry is Y. It's checked to see if another entry is Y. It's true, so it's trying to get the player's name. So I'm going to type in K. Hit enter, and it says, please type in the score of K. See, this is what I, this is what I wanted to do. All right, so let's add a colon here just to make it look nice. So please type in the score of player name. Let's concatenate it with a colon here and a 
of space just to make it look good. Okay, so please type in the play name. Okay, hit enter. Please type in the score of K. I'm going to type in 56 and hit enter. And it's asking me, do you want another record? Type Y for yes and, a, and another character for no. So what happens if I type in the, the uppercase Y? See, um, it says goal file is not defined. Let's see. Oh, I'm, I'm meant to type. I'm meant to do. I'm meant to type goal file. So let's close. Let's stop this and run it again. Okay, 45. I'm going to type in uppercase Y for this. Hit enter. And it says all details have been printed to the goal file. It was supposed to ask me because I type in Y, right? It said type the, the lowercase Y, right? So let's create the program in such a way that when the user types in the lowercase Y, uppercase Y it still works. And that's what I was trying to do here. So while another entry is equal to lowercase y or uppercase y, so this is what I this this is what did um this is what you know didn't look good to me. So I think it's an error. Let, let's just try again. Let's try and see. Um, so k forty five and uppercase y. Okay, so it's working. All right, so this is correct. Okay, so this is correct. So this, I thought you had to type something like while well, another entry is equal to y or another entry is equal to uppercase y, something like that. So this works. Before that, let's add a colon here so it doesn't look off. All right, so now let's test this to make sure the program is working. I type in k. I type in a score of 4 to 5. I type in, do you want another record? I say yes. I type in... Um, Kakra, I type in a score of 56. One more, say yes. I type in um, um, John, a score of 78. And it's asking me, I'm going to, this time around, I'm going to type in N for no. And hit enter. Now it says, hmm, do you want another record? Type Y for yes and any other character for no. So I typed in N. And so it was supposed to. When I typed in N, it was supposed to end. Do you want another character? So there's a problem here. Please type in another player name. All right, so let's let's fix it back to what I was saying. While another entry is equal to Y, or another entry, let's try this, or another entry is equal to uppercase Y like this. Let's try that and see if it gives us an error. All right, so K, 45, yes. Kakra, 67, yes. John, 32. And I'm going to type in N, hit enter. And now it's working. Now it says all details have been printed to golf.txt. So I was right. It looked off to me. It wasn't right. This is the right way to do it. We have to type it, you know, we have to be explicit about it. So while another entry is is equal to y, okay, is double equal to y, or another entry is double equal to y. So basically, we are saying if the user types in a lowercase y or an uppercase y, um, we should allow the um, the user to type in more details for players. So the first um, syntax, the way I wrote it, was wrong, and that's why we're getting funny results here. This is the right way to do it. So uh, yeah, so I, I was kind of correct. Um, although it was a bit rough, <laughs> so so now this is working. Let's let's open the folder to see if the file has been created with these details. So I'm going to open that folder. I'm going to go to desktop. I can see it here. Let's see um, desktop Python programming challenges chapter six golf scores, and the file has been created golf the txt over here. And so let's open it to see. All right, so I open it and we can see it's working. So in the question it said over here, in the question it said that each record will have a field for the player's name and a field for the player's score, right? So we are saving, it says, and then save these as records in a file. So this piece of information, 4 to 5 and K, K and 4 to 5, that's one record. Okay, because it's there are, there are different uh, piece, pieces of information about one person. In this case, K. My name is K, and I got a score of four, four to five. That's one record. Kakra and sixty-seven. It's another record. John and thirty-two is another record. So we are saving it in the files records, and then each piece of information is a field. 
Okay, this each piece of information is a field that's saying each record will have a field for the player's name and a field for the player's score, like this. All right, so player's name and a player's score, player's name and player's score. So we can see it's working. K45, okay, Kakra67, then John32. Right, so now we are done with the first program. We've been able to write the player's information into the file. We're done. So let's create another program that is going to read from the file. It says uh, another program, okay, that reads the records from the golf.txt file and displays them. So let's go ahead and I'm going to create another file. And let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and save it first in that same folder because we are going to try to access the, that file. If we save this program in another, fo in another location and we try to open that file, we need to basically type in the, the path to where that gov.txt file is, okay, in this program before it can find it. But if we save it in the same location where, okay, where the basically the golf, the txt file is, then we don't have to type in the path. We just type in the name of the file and it can access it. So I'm going to save this file as, let's see, um, golf data read, something like that. Golf data read dot pi because we're reading data from that um, golf golf file so save this we have the the scores the, the scores here the pro the basically the file that um let's see the file the, the program that basically allows the users to type in the the player's information we're going to write a program to read from that file so the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, let's create a f the main function, right? The main function again is the fun the function that calls every other function. The, that's the that's where the program starts, basically. In that main function, let's go ahead and open that golf.txt file. We have it in our folder here. We have it in our folder. The golf.txt file is in our folder. So let's go ahead and open that golf.txt file. This time around, we want to open it in read mode because we're going to we are trying to read from it, and so in double quotations or single quotations, I'm going to type in the letter R. So I'm opening golf.txt in read mode. Okay, when I call this open function and I pass in these two arguments, it's going to create a file object, and it, when it creates that file object, we need a variable to refer to that file object. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it golf file just like the other one. It doesn't matter we are using the same names because these are two different programs. They don't even see each other. So it's fine to use golf file here because you have two different programs, right? All right. So golf file, this variable is going to refer to that file that we just opened in read mode. All right. So let's see. We want to try to read from the file. Okay, so I'm going to attempt, first of all, this is our file. I'm going to attempt to read the first line from the file. That is the, the player's name, right? So I'm going to call golf file dot read line, okay? So when I call golf file dot read line, in, anytime you try to read from a line, okay, there is what's called a read position and it's by default at the beginning of this line here. So before I call read line, this read position will be here waiting for me to call it. So when I call read line, it reads K and it returns K, right? And as soon as it, re it returns K, it moves the read position from the end of this line to, to the beginning of this line, um, 4 to 5, and waits for me to call read line again. When I call read line again, it reads 4 to 5, returns that in the program, waits uh, sorry, so it returns that in the program, and it's going to move that read position from the end of this line to the beginning of the next line, which is Kakra, and wait for uh, for me or us to, to call the read line um, method again. So that's how it works. But when the program starts, the read, read position is at the beginning of the line. When I call read line, it reads K and moves the read position from that, end, from that line to the next line and waits for us to call read line again before it reads another line. So I read the first line. And we, I know the first line is going to be the name. So I'm going to store that in a variable. I'm going to call it player name. All right? So go file um, the read line is player name. 
I want to check. Now, now it's possible that sometimes you try to read from this file and there is nothing in this file. Anytime you, you call the read line method and it returns an empty string, that shows that the file is empty. All right, it shows the file is empty. So I'm going to use a while loop to check for that. I'm going to say while player name, the, f the line that we just read, while player name is not equal to, this exclamation sign means not, okay? While player name is not equal to an empty string. Again, when you call read line and it returns an empty string, that means there's nothing in the file. So if we call read line over here and this contains nothing, then there's nothing in the file. But if this did not contain okay, an empty string, while player name is not equal to an empty string, that means we're able to read something. We're able to read the player, the player name. And so if we're able to read a player name, we have it. Let's go ahead. Let's continue to read the next line. So when we call read line, it reads K and it moves the position from the from this end of this line to over here to, to the beginning of uh, 4 to 5 and allows us to call read line again. So let's go ahead and call read line again. We know it's going to read the score. So let's say, let's call it and say player score is go well before that. Let's just, let's just do this step by step. Let's call golf file dot read line again. Golf file dot read line. And when we re read the next line, okay, it's going to read the number 45, and that's going to be a score. So I'm going to call um, create a variable called player score, which is going to store the, the score, right? All right. So over here, we'll have the player name, we'll have the player score, and um, we can go ahead and display it, display it for now, right? We can go ahead and display it for now. So let's see here.